How do we measure safety performance? Most commonly, it's by outcomes. That is the incident rate, the occurrence of serious injuries, and unfortunately, maybe even a fatality. While it's important to know and understand what has happened, it's even more critical that we focus on understanding what could happen. In other words, what yet hasn't surfaced as an event. The Dacre Exposure Reduction Model gives us a way of looking at our organization before the crisis, before the bad news, so that we can begin to see where we are vulnerable and understand how we are exposed to those vulnerabilities. But most importantly, this model enables us to focus on action before the unfortunate outcome occurs. Central to Dacre's exposure reduction model is the concept of exposure. Quite simply, when people and hazards come in close proximity to each other, an exposure of those people to the hazard is created. In other words, the people become vulnerable to injury. Think of turning on the lights when you came into the room. Your exposure, the overlap of you with electricity when you flick that switch is minute. The switch was extensively engineered and properly installed so as to physically separate you from the electricity. But what if instead there was just a knife switch with exposed copper contacts on the wall? In this case, feeling for the switch in the dark could be disastrous. The overlap of you with the hazard in this scenario is nearly complete and vulnerability to electrical injury is high. In thinking about exposure, it's important to keep in mind that not all exposures are the same. Exposures have the potential for a variety of consequences, including some very severe outcomes. Our research shows that when we look at recordable incidents across clients, about 25% of those incidents had the potential if just one factor could have easily changed to have resulted in a life-altering injury. That is an injury where life is lost or permanently altered. Think again of the light switch. If it is not properly installed, perhaps the protective plate is missing with wires exposed. All that need happen for a severe or lethal shock to occur is inadvertently touching the wires with your hand, especially if still holding that metal door with your other hand. In this case, the potential exposure at the light switch, should you simply misplace your hand, is severe. Identification and correction of that improper light switch deserves immediate attention, even if no injury has yet occurred. So the key to minimizing vulnerability to injury is separating people from the hazard, thus minimizing the exposure. This is a seemingly simple action, but one that is deceptively difficult to implement at the job let alone across the entire organization, and even more difficult to sustain over time. So let's consider what are the key influencers in our ability to consistently identify and control exposure. Every organization's existence is based on a value proposition. In other words, what does the organization create to justify its existence? Through decades of research and experience, Dacre has developed a keen understanding of how the creation of value is often accompanied by a corresponding creation of exposure for workers. We refer to this place where people and processes and equipment come together as the working interface. This is the place where value is created for the organization and depending on how the work actually gets done is also the place where workers have exposure to injury. But what drives the way work gets done? It's the culture, which at that working interface also heavily influences exposure, the vulnerability of workers to injury that we discussed earlier. Think of culture as a fabric against which stated expectations and intentions are interpreted into activity. It determines how we go about performing the work to create value. So how do we influence that culture? Our research shows that while there are many aspects to culture, it's leadership that is the primary influencer across the organization. The actions of leaders message what is important and what is not. Dacre's research shows that leaders shape the culture, influencing it in many ways through their actions and their words. The culture of an organization is a reflection of its leaders. So it is leaders who shape the culture and the culture that influences the acceptability of exposing workers to injury and the production of value. In addition to leadership, culture, and the working interface elements, there are four more elements influencing exposure. 
Think of the black bars in the figure as levers leaders use to help shape culture and to influence how work is performed safely at the working interface. Now let's talk about each of these additional exposure reduction elements in turn. Exposure control systems specify the processes and provide the skills necessary to work effectively in producing outcomes. To the extent that they are in place, applicable, and actually used to provide consistent expectations, they affect the exposure inherent in the work. Performance management provides the means for selecting workers and motivating and rewarding them for work performed. Systems that sustain alignment of human capital with their ability to actually meet the job demands are fundamental to sustain control of exposure and managing vulnerability to injury. Human performance reliability addresses the cognitive aspects of decision making. It recognizes human failability and seeks to position leaders and workers to perform mistake free, but with consideration of potential vulnerability should a failure occur. Seeking to perform activities correctly the first time and every time distances workers from hazards, reducing exposure. And governance provides the means for leaders to communicate their intentions, for workers to respond and identify the needs, and for barriers to be removed at all levels and across the organization. Robust governance systems create transparency and clarity around intentions, needs, and progress in implementing change. The interrelationship of these seven elements is the DACRA exposure reduction model, the framework for understanding how and to what degree the organization recognizes, understands, and controls exposure, thereby addressing vulnerability before it results in an injury. While this exposure reduction model describes how exposure is managed in the workplace, organizations use a variety of processes and activities to operationalize the elements into their work streams. That is, to manage exposure within their unique businesses. A sampling of the processes and activities, or in other words, the influencers, are indicated within the green swoosh, where organizations implement these influencers well consistently they accurately contain exposure as indicated by the enclosing arrow. Taken as a whole, these influencers represent a strategy to identifying and managing or containing exposure. We see a range of influencers across organizations with varying effectiveness depending on how well and consistently they are implemented, their alignment with need, and their management over time. Assessment of these practices using the Dacre Exposure Reduction Model provides not just insight into their effectiveness, but it also informs where adjustment is warranted to reduce vulnerability to injury. When considering how best to control exposure, it's often useful to think about the specific exposures in your workplace. Across organizations and industries, we see 12 specific exposures recurring in most workplaces. Of course, their importance and influence in any particular workplace varies depending on how and what work is done there. All 12 of these specific exposures are not critical in every workplace, but some subset almost always is. And in addition, many industries will have some critical exposures unique to them. This recognition and control of specific exposures, as well as the overall exposure, is a function of the Dacre Exposure Reduction Model. And it helps us to devise effective strategies in reducing vulnerability. In summary, we know the intersection of hazards with people creates a vulnerability to injury called exposure. We also know there are seven elements described in the Dacre Exposure Reduction Model that affect the ability of organizations to recognize and control exposure. And we know those organizations that have operationalized the seven elements with robust processes and actions are better able to control exposure wherever work gets done across their organization. It is these organizations, the ones that continually seek out and control exposure, that are likely to have sustained success at reducing the vulnerability of their workers to injury.